Scotland is home to one of the most iconic legendary myths, the Loch Ness Monster. A very fitting myth as the island is decorated with the most captivating sceneries located in the northernmost part of Scotland, which is referred to as the Highlands. It contains the tallest mountains in the United Kingdom, as well as the number of freshwater lakes than England and Wales combined. But did you know that it is also home to one of the most atrocious myths in history? Welcome back to The Enigma, and today we will be talking about Alexander Sonny Bean was born in the 16th century in East Lothian, and early in his life, he tried to follow in his father's footstep as a ditch digger and hedge trimmer, but quickly realized he wasn't fit for it. He felt like he didn't fit in the town where he is from, so he decided to leave. On his way, he encountered a woman named Black Agnes Douglas, and as soon as they spoke to one another, they realized they shared the same ill tendency. In her case, she was accused of being a witch, so she decided to leave as well. Feeling empowered because of their shared similarity, and as an act of revenge to the townspeople, the couple committed heinous acts of robbing and the cannibalization of one of their victims before they decided to elope. They wound up in a coastal cave between Girvan and Bellantre called Beninhead. This became the ideal hideout for them because during high tide, water closed the entrance to the cave, warding off any suspicion. Because of this, they were able to live there for 25 years without being discovered. For a long time, no one heard anything about the terrible couple until a large number of victims went missing. Because the majority of the roads connecting the villages as a means of business were solitary and at times secluded, it became an issue. Many of the travelers were robbed and slain in the areas, and at first, it didn't raise any suspicions. But later, people began to realize that the number of missing people continued rising by the day. As more people in the area became aware of the disappearances, multiple coordinated hunts to discover the perpetrators were initiated. The cave was uncovered during a search, but the men refused to accept that anything human could reside in it. The townspeople searched everywhere for the culprit, but ended up feeling frustrated and in a frenzied search for justice, several innocent people were lynched, but still, the disappearances persisted. Local innkeepers were frequently singled out for suspicion because they were the last known to have seen many of the missing people alive. It wasn't until a married couple inadvertently entered the area of these ruthless killers that they were attacked mercilessly. Despite the fact that the unlucky woman was dragged from her horse, ripped apart and mauled to death, her husband was a much tougher opponent. He rode his horse directly into the surge of would-be attackers, trampled the majority of them with his sword in hand. As a huge band of revelers from a nearby fair arrived on the scene, outnumbering the beans together. The beans didn't have a choice but to flee. The survivor went straight to Glasgow's chief magistrate with his case. The magistrate, along with a slew of other missing person complaints over the years, alerted King James I to the situation. The king then dispatched 400 troops and an army of bloodhounds to Ayrshire. Following word of the quest, a group of dedicated local volunteers joined one of Scotland's largest manhunts. The search would have been impossible if one were to rely solely on visual cues, but with the help of the bloodhounds, they were able to identify the odor of decaying flesh coming from a nearby cave. The soldiers approached the cave first, swords drawn, not knowing what to expect. What they witnessed was a product of a nightmare, far beyond the imagination of the most brazen of souls. The walls were bloody and were encrusted with the discarded bones of numerous victims' limbs and legs. They discovered jewelry in one portion of the cave, in another, there were piles of bones that had been stripped of their flesh. It's hard to believe that this atrocity was the deed of a single family, and now, 
they are being cornered at the end of the cave. The family could only hold out for so long as they were outnumbered 10 to 1, and eventually, they surrendered. Every single member was personally marched all the way to Edinburgh by the king. Sonny Bean and his family's crimes were so well known that a trial was never even considered. Rather, the entire family was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to death. All 21 ladies were burned at the stake, while 27 men were tortured mercilessly by their unfortunate victims' families. All of their limbs were removed and their wounds were left to bleed. The women were forced to watch this punishment before their sentences were carried out. What really happened was the Beans family grew. The family had to resort to the most freakish methods to feed everyone. When it was only the couple, in order to sustain themselves, they only had to rob the people that were passing by in the lonely road by ambushing them during the night. And eventually, they had to hide the evidence by murdering them. But as the family grew, robbing and murdering is no longer sustainable, so they succumbed to cannibalism, which Sonny Bean taught his entire clan to partake. At the same time, Sonny had unintentionally solved another problem by elevating the clues of his crimes. The bodies were dragged back to the clan's cave, where they were dismembered and consumed. The leftovers were preserved in barrels, and the rest of the body parts were dumped, which would occasionally wash up on surrounding beaches. This method was employed to help conceal their crimes by leading residents to assume that the attackers were wild animals. It's hard to believe that cannibalism is not the only appalling act the Beans had been practicing. Sonny and Agnes had a total of 8 sons, 6 daughters, and another 18 grandsons and 14 granddaughters, all of which were the products of incest between their children. <laughs> 